Hi, I'm Josh at the Vacuums RS in Colorado, and today we're going to be replacing the foot switch that engages and disengages the transmission, the power drive on a Kirby. Uh, that's the switch that's right down here that is missing right now. It fell out. Super common that these things pop out. Not too bad of a repair to get them done. You do need some Torx bits. This is going to apply to any Kirby that has a power drive, that drives itself. Kirby's done very little to modernize or change their machines, and they essentially are all based on the same base foundation for the last 40 years. So if your machine used to drive itself and now doesn't because this switch popped out, this video will be applicable to you. All right, before we start this repair, disclaimer time. This video is for informational purposes only. These repairs should only be done by factory authorized technicians in vacuum stores. If something goes wrong here, I am not responsible for any issues that might arise. If the vacuum becomes sentient and eats your cat, not our problem. Seriously though, watch the entire video. A lot of these repairs are very difficult. Make sure you're confident in performing this repair before you start, because the last thing in the world you wanna do is take this machine apart and then bring it into a repair shop because you couldn't complete the repair. Many repair shops like ours will not accept machines once they've been messed around with. So make sure you can do this before you start because you're in it to win it. So we're gonna start out, I'm gonna take apart part of the machine. I'm gonna pull the bag off. I'll pull this sideways and it pops right off. I'm gonna go ahead and what I do is I always zip tie my cords to kind of keep it all together and so it doesn't fall all over the place. I just zip it together, otherwise we have cord everywhere. Take the cord off. This gauge right here, pop that cord off and set that to the side. And now I'm also going to remove the handle. There's a push button right here, and then the handle will pop right off. <clears throat> now we're going to start taking stuff apart. Now, depending on what generation Kirby you have, you may have a bunch of Phillips heads, or you may have a bunch of Torx screws. Um, I believe they're T20s if they are Torx, if I'm not mistaken. So we got T20s on here. Sometimes you'll run into T15s holding in your um, cord up here, depending on what year Kirby you have. All right, so I took the screw off right here that's holding this um, cord retainer in. There's one screw that comes off and then you take a flat head and you pop, pop this up and right off. So now your cord retainer is off. Now the cord will just simply unplug right there. And now we're gonna have, the cord's gonna be held in up top by a screw here. On a more modern Kirby's, you have two screws on the side that holds the cord in. I notice this has a Phillips head back here, so I'm gonna change bits real quick. It's a not, that's not an original screw. It's really common that these screws fall out, this back screw. And then you'll find, you know, whatever random screw the customer may have had. Yep, T15 on the top. So we actually sell all of these Torx bits as a set. I'll link to it below where you can buy a full set of all the Torx bits that are used on Kirby and Dyson and Shark. So I'm gonna pull this up. It'll just pop up. It's got a little clip right there that clips it down. But yeah, you can buy the full bit set from us. That's every possible Torx and security bit you could ever find on a vacuum cleaner. So I'm back to T20 now. So I got two screws back here. So you can see the smaller screw is our cord retainer screw. The thicker screw is the screw that's used on these sides and then on the cord retainer. So now we're gonna take the head off, we'll flip this around. I'm gonna spin the belt razor so it'll lift the belt off the motor shaft. And then I'm gonna undo that and then the head will pop right off for me. Now I've got two screws on the front which are also T20s. Um, these screws are different than the other ones we've taken off. They will always be different. They have a, a rounded head. And that rounded head sets right into their kind of flush. So those two front screws are unique. All right, so now our lid is gonna come right off. Super easy. So next I'm gonna take the plastic switch actuator out. These are frequently broken. Um, we'll link to the full schematics below so you can order whatever parts that you might need to. All of the schematics will be right there. All right, so this switch is held in. There's two plastic clips up here 
And then on the side of the switch, there's a metal rod that connects to the side of the switch right here. And that metal rod goes back and engages the power switch. So these two plastic clips are what we're going to need to kind of pop this off of. And those are actually what breaks too. They're frequently broken. One of the, one or the other will be broken. And then it'll just slide off that, <coughs> that little rod right there. And we'll set that aside. Uh, so next we're gonna need to drop the transmission out. That's done from the bottom. We have three screws down here. And these are all gonna be fairly long T15s are going to be longer than the other ones that you've pulled out so far. Okay, so I've got three screws out. You're going to have one screw right here that's still in, and that's actually what's holding in the piece that you're going to need to replace, but I usually don't take that out quite yet. So I'm going to pull it out part way, and it'll catch, and what it's catching on actually is the belt over here. Uh, the belt is still connected, so you just kind of slide the belt off, and then the whole puppy will slide right out for you. Generally, you can see this actuator arm, this metal arm, which is what hooked into the side of the plastic switch. That will usually get in your way a little bit. You have to move that around as you pull your transmission out. Okay, so don't lose your belt. And now this is the piece that we're going to be replacing. Um, I just had a piece fall out right here. This is a metal piece that was uh, connected to the foot pedal that fell out. And that's uh, part of the assembly that we're about to replace. So I'm going to take this other final screw out. And this is a short screw with a lock nut on it. And then this whole assembly will just kind of fall out for me. All right, so this is the part we're gonna be replacing. Comes with the, the foot pedal, and then it comes with this little piece that was pressed on, this little piece that fell out. Um, usually, you know, I see a lot of people, I think the customer actually provided the pedal for us. Yeah, they did. So this is their old pedal they provided it for us. The, the problem is my experience has been once these have fallen out one time, if you press this back on, it's loose and it's going to pop out again. So you really need to just replace the whole assembly. I'll link to this below. Um, so this right here, you can see there's a lot of dirt on it. The reason there's dirt on it is at one point in time, it had grease on it. And now the dirt is kind of attaching to the grease um, and it's kind of bone dry. I'm going to take this out real quick. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to blow it off to get some of the dirt off. We're going to add a little bit more grease to this before we put it back together. All right, so I'm going to add a little bit of grease all over the place here. I'm using a clear synthetic grease. This is a grease that we actually use in sewing service. It is not cheap. It's like 20 bucks a bottle or something. I'll link to it below if you want to buy some. I'm sure there's less expensive greases that would be appropriate for this use, but this is what we, uh, you know, it's kind of what we have. So we sell the stuff, and so this is what we use. Put a little bit of grease on here, just all over the place. There we go. Okay, so this piece right here, there's a hole on this right here that that will need to go into. And I'm gonna, I'll show you the finished, after I get it out, I'll show you how it goes. There we go. Okay, so you can see that little rod goes through that. And then the whole thing's gonna go in here and it's all gonna be held in by that one screw. There's this little plastic dot that goes inside the transmission right here. I forgot, it's relevant. It's, uh, you need to put it in, in, in drive mode, not neutral. In drive is how it inserts. So I will find my Again, this is a short, a short screw with a lock washer will be the one that goes in down here if you don't remember what you took out. Okay, now we're gonna need to, now we're gonna reinsert the transmission. Comes from the bottom. So you got this little bugger right here that you gotta kind of keep out of your way. And at the same time, you also need to get this belt back in place as well. So I'm gonna leave the belt off for a moment insert this back up in here okay now i'm going to bring the belt on with the belt around the large pulley and then around the small one okay and then we'll insert the transmission there's a forked gear or a forked a forked thing on here 
and there's a slot on the handle that goes back and forth that that fork slides into. That's what causes your power drive to engage and disengage. As you're pulling the handle back and forth, that fork will engage and disengage the transmission. And your metal rod is gonna to need to fall down. My fork is in there. You can see if you pull this back and forth, if you look back here, you can see that your transmission is engaging and disengaging. That's how that works. <clears throat> so I'm in there, my belt is on, my switch actuator is down here and it's loose so I can hook up my plastic switch. I'm gonna put the two screws, I'm sorry, three screws. And these are the three long silver screws, probably silver. I think there's silver on all of them. One in front, one in back, and the final one. Okay, now I'm gonna put the plastic switch actuator back on. So I'm gonna grab this little metal rod down here, and I have this here that that's gonna hook into. And then it'll go down, and then the two clips up top need to switch in. That actuates well now, and I'll put the lid back on. Two screws in the front are the screws that have the bevel. They're pointed too, I don't know why. Since I'm up front, I'm gonna go ahead and put the head back on again. Drop the belt onto the motor. All right, I got two screws in the back. And then on this particular model, the cord retainer goes underneath the plastic cover. Um, where the cord is located is gonna depend on the model of your Kirby. That is one thing that they've changed around here and there. But on this one, the cord uh, connects underneath this plastic, this plastic piece here. I've got my narrow, it's a real small T15, and that's usually the case on the cord, uh, the cord screws on pretty much all the models that I can think of. Change over to Phillips. And then the cord is going to plug back in over here. And then I have that cord retainer. These cord retainers are always a pain. I hook the bottom in first usually. There we go. And then I have a final T20. All right. Put the handle on, put the bag on, fire it up, make sure it runs. All right, our power drive engages and disengages without any problems. It goes just as fast backwards as it does forward. No clicks. Runs pretty smooth, actually. So we are done. Hopefully you enjoyed this exciting, exciting Kirby repair video brought to you by Vacuums R Us in Colorado.